Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm glad to see you here. Today, we are going to explore one option to cleanse dirty data. It's called Fuzzy Merge and it is a feature that we can all access in Power BI. In an ideal world, we would only have clean data. However, it hardly ever happens. Real life data is usually not that clean or less than perfect. If you also feel the pain of dirty data, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to learn great tips and tricks about data modeling, data visualization, and general best practices to follow as an analyst. First of all, we all know that dirty data can hinder business insights, but how can we define dirty data? After some binging and googling, we can find some sort of a definition of it. Dirty data can be incorrect, inaccurate, incomplete, or inconsistent data. In layman terms, dirty data is usually the kind of data we cannot use as is, it must go through some sort of a cleansing exercise. The process of data cleansing can be done via data conditioners or data janitors, or we can rely on algorithms to fix our data. And this is what we are going to cover today, relying on Powers BI fuzzy matching. It works like magic, but in some cases it may not be enough. Let's head over to Power Query and explore today's example. We are going to talk about movies today. A few weeks ago, I posted a survey on social media platforms about people's favorite movie. It only had three questions for simplicity, and those are the ones that you can see on the screen right now. Huge shout out to those who participated. You made this video possible. Each and every one of you are a bloody legend and deserve a pat on the back. I purposefully asked for favorite movie title and let the users respond with free text. Some might say it was a rookie mistake, but I had my reasons for that. Let's be honest, how many of you would know the exact title of your favorite movie? I mean the one that can be found on IMDb for example. Let me know in the comments below if you think you would know that. But I digress. I would consider this a perfect example of dirty, but useful data. I think we have all seen stuff like this, or even worse. So my idea was that once I collect these titles, I look for them in the top 100 movies list from IMDb, match their rank and list a few extra details. As some of these movies may not be part of the top 100 list, I also had to create another query where I exported movie specific details based on the official English title of your movies. But wait, merging these records to any data from IMDB would pose some issues. Namely, Power Query would not be able to match all of these. Let me show you. I'm not going to cover all the details of merge queries. I have another video about that, make sure to watch it if you are not 100% sure what's going on here. I also mentioned fuzzy merge as an option there. And today we are finally going to cover this topic. So it's clear to see that a simple left join is not an option for us. Just a friendly reminder for Excel folks, it's like a VLOOKUP with the exact match option. Let's click on the gear icon next to the merge query step and check out that fuzzy match option. What happens when I enable fuzzy matching? Wow, we can already increase the number of matches from 7 to 11. That's a great start. Let's try it out. Looking much better now. However, it is still not perfect. I can tell you that there is only one movie left that even Fuzzy Match couldn't pick up, and it is Star Wars Return of the Jedi. So what can we do to make sure that we are picking up details for that one as well? Click on the gear icon again and explore our fuzzy matching options. 
there are four options that we can adjust. The first one is similarity threshold. Here we can fine tune the level of similarity that the algorithm should use. It needs to be a number between 0 and 1. By default, it's 0.8. If I change this to 1 and untick the next two options, we are back to a simple exact match merge with only 7 matches. Next up is ignore case. It's not that straightforward, but essentially if we have this one ticked or enabled, it means that the matching algorithm will ignore case sensitivity. So it doesn't matter if your data is uppercase or lowercase or proper case. I personally always like to have this one enabled. The second box is going to combine, or for all the Excel folks out there, concatenate the text within the fields. You might use this one with caution, depending on your scenario. A really great example is also visible under the question mark. Then we can specify the number of matches we want Power Query to show. It might be counterintuitive, but in some cases having more than just one match will provide better chances for us to clean data, especially if we have super similar naming convention in place but 99% of the time, I either leave it empty or specify one. And lastly, we have the option to use a transformation table. Allow me to skip this one now. We will come back to this in the second part. When I usually run fuzzy matching in Power Query, I prefer to start playing with the similarity threshold first. If I change the default 0.8 to 0.7, Power Query will be able to match Return of the Jedi to its official title. Ok, so far we have matched user input, or I should rather say your favorite movies to the official IMDB top 100 list, but I don't want to leave those whose movie were not listed in the top 100 list behind. As I said in the intro, I also exported details about all movies such as official IMDB ratings and length, just for the sake of having fun. With that said, Let's go back to my PC and see what sort of a fuzzy matching options we need to run to get everyone's movie map to its official English title. I'm going to duplicate the submitted movies query and remove the last two steps. I have prepared the IMDB extract using a parameter. This is essentially a lookup table to pick up those details. I want to place these two fields next to your movies. Let's give it a try. As you can see, a regular left join or VLOOKUP for Excel users would only find 14 matches. But we already learned how to use fuzzy matching. So let's start increasing our numbers. As soon as I turn on fuzzy matching, we will have 23 matches. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. But that means we still have three movies not matching to anything. As I mentioned before, I usually start by decreasing similarity threshold. 0.7 doesn't change anything. 0.6 finds another one. Let's see which one. It's the Dracula movie. If I head back to fuzzy matching options and further reduce the threshold to 0.5, Power Query will find Jersey as well. And look at that, the answer to the survey question contained not only the title of the movie, but also some explanation. Yet Power Query with fuzzy matching was able to find it in our list. At this stage, I wouldn't decrease the threshold any further. 
we have set a 50% similarity threshold and maybe anything below that would give us a false positive match. So let's tackle the one remaining movie, which is Harry Potter. 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 The problem here is that on IMDb, we have heaps of Harry Potter movies, so I actually left them out from the movie ref table. Let's see what happens if I add them in. Oh crap, we just lost Jersey. That's not exactly what I would call progress. But hey, uh, this is exactly what might happen in your scenario. So let's revisit our options under fuzzy matching. As I mentioned, I wouldn't decrease similarity threshold as it may skew our results, but we have another powerful option on the bottom. And it is the transformation table. When everything else fails to match values as a last result, we can manually intervene. This transformation table allows us to teach Power Query to find matches. Think about this as a bridging table between the tables that cannot be matched. This is for the hardcore data cleaners, when we have some really dirty data. We only need two columns, a from and a to column to clean results, like the one that you can see right now on the screen. As I had no idea which Harry Potter movie is the user's favorite, I picked one. In a business scenario, we could probably just go back to the user to clarify, but obviously, in this instance, I had no way of contacting the person. Hmm, we have multiple results now, so there are two options to finish off today's exercise. We can either adjust the threshold so it wouldn't pick up all the Harry Potter movies, or limit the maximum number of matches to one. I'm going to do the latter. With that final step, we have all of your movies matched or mapped to IMDB dataset, and we can wrap this up. Let's have a quick wrap up before you go and start practicing fuzzy matching we started with trying to find exact matches in our dataset. It wasn't too successful, as we had heaps of missing data. After that, we turned on fuzzy matching with its default settings, and we got a bit closer to a clean dataset. We then started to fine-tune some of the parameters within the fuzzy matching options, and ended up utilizing a transformation table to teach Power Query what to use for the two movies we struggled to clean up just with the algorithm. It also means that we didn't have to overwrite raw data, which is bad, 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 bad practice. Especially if you have lots of data points to overwrite. On top of fuzzy matching, you also have fuzzy clustering and fuzzy grouping. If you would like to learn a little bit more about those options, I'm going to leave some links in the description below. I know this video wasn't as fancy and colorful as the usual stuff, but without clean and reliable data, we just simply couldn't go ahead with the data this bit. So make sure that you spend some time cleansing your data the smart way before you invest lots of time drawing insights from the report. You can also spend a couple of seconds to comment below and let me know if you like this trick or if you have ever used fuzzy matching before. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something new and interesting from this video. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new episode. Stay tuned for more to come. See ya!